All right, all right. What's going on there, folks? Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. I don't know where you guys are at, but hey, welcome back here on the Earthquake Live 3D stream. It is the Earthmaster here on this uh, wonderful Sunday night. Uh, we are uh, technically out here along the West Coast, California time, right? About 11.20 p.m. California time. Getting very close to the Monday Monday morning time frame. All right, so I'm giving you guys a heads up on where I'm at. West Coast, latest earthquake, a 2.6 down here into the California area. So I want to jump in real quick here to the Iceland activity because this is the area of elevated earthquake movement here across this area of Iceland. So um, no joke. This is a divergent boundary, right? A rift zone, so to speak. And I think everyone that paid attention in history class, or at least in geology class, would know what a rift zone is about. That means a separation of the continents, so to speak. There, separation of the plate tectonics. And Iceland sits within that divergent boundary out here across the, uh, uh, it's across the northern Atlantic, so to speak up against the uh, Greenland area. So, we are looking at some elevated earthquake activity stirring up here north of Grindavik area, Viceland, including a three-pointer. I got that three-pointer stirring up there. Looks like uh, at least a magnitude of 3.0 occurring down there about five kilometers deep. That's at least one of the larger earthquakes here north of Hagafell. And north of the, this region right here, I need to pronounce that correctly. Uh, uh, Slingafell area, I think that's correct. Um, I will be uh, correcting myself if that's wrong. But either way, this is in a region where we're looking at uh, the elevated seismic activity and volcanic activity taking place here in Iceland. Uh, this is a region where they think the uh, they i'm saying they uh, in terms of geologists and volca uh, volcanologists and and those folks that have a lot of uh, you know a lot of uh oh what no, what's the word I, I can't even think of the wording <laughs> a lot of the um paper on the wall you know you know the uh Degrees. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Goodness, those are the folks that have the degrees in the wall. And I, I'm really, uh, I'm really surprised that it took me that long to uh, put out that wording. Okay. Either way. Okay. En enough of the whatever, so on and so on. We are looking at a pretty good increase in earthquake activity out here across Iceland, northeast. Of Grindavik, Iceland, in an area where the professionals, right, we're talking about the professionals, claim that the earthquake activity could lead to an eruption towards the surface. Uh, and that's kind of, that's a region that we're looking at right now, in this area right now. We had seen a tremendous amount of earthquake activity out here in the last 12 hours. So, this is not anything minor. This is definitely uh, elevated activity. Um, if we look at the earthquake 3D globe here, let me show you guys real quick here. Um, we have seen somewhat of an elevated movement here across the area north Atlantic northward in the Iceland and uh, for the areas northward. We did see a 4.5, 3.0 into the Iceland area. Elevated movement here across the area of Iceland. That has led to increasing seismic activity out here across the Iceland area. So think about this on a large scale journey, right? When the North Atlantic area, the plate, uh, plate areas here, the divergent boundaries, so to speak, get active, well, what do you think happens below, right? Does magma flow up further towards the surface with this activity? Obviously, it does, right? 
So that's why we have seen a major increase in earthquake activity across this area where we have been seeing volcanic activity down below, right? Obviously, magma intrusion. So hand in hand, the activity occurring up north and all across the northern Atlantic is playing a major part there in the uh, uh, earthquake activity and volcanic activity there across Iceland. So just a heads up, I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely one of those things where um, uh, it is or is not going to stir up here following this activity. So obviously we have to watch this pretty closely here across Iceland in terms of volcanic activity. One earthquake here across the it uh, looks like the Northern Mariana Islands area, 5.0 coming in here. Uh, pretty shallow earthquake there, north of the Mariana Islands. Uh, most of the activity here today has been confined to the areas in the clutter zones, obviously across the western areas of the Filipino Plate and South America. Look at this. Some good time movement going on here. In this area, across Chile, quite a few fours and threes turn up there across the region. We did have one five-pointer. Uh, I think it's a five-pointer down here. Across the South Sandwich Islands area earlier this evening. Uh, it, it does look like things are stirring up here across the Atlantic Ocean area. And when things pick up here across the divergent boundaries... Right, it's a separation of the seafloor, so to speak. That's the areas to watch in terms of current volcanic earthquake activity or volcanic activity, so to speak. So Iceland, obviously, things stirring up out there right now. We'll continue to watch that region. Uh, minimal activity out here across the west coast. Nothing major going on, as far as any elevated activity goes. Uh, same for Hawaii. Obviously, inflation, big time, stirring up out there across the Kilauea Volcano. Um, we'll continue to watch that and see how it plays out. But uh, I think until we see it in terms of increased earthquake activity, we're not going to see any uh, volcanic activity. I think we need to see elevated, obviously, earthquake activity before that uh, volcanic activity stirs up across the region of Hawaii. All right, uh, real quick check. Real quick check here of the space weather activity. We are looking at slight sea flare activity current uh, occurring here on the sun. Uh, it looks as though maybe that's occurring from uh, fudge. I don't even know. It's kind of hard to uh, decipher here from from the sun, so sunspot regions that are kicking up here. Uh, 3,500, 3,499 harbor the most potential here across the visible disk of the sun. I'm guessing maybe it, that occurred from 3,500 or maybe a sunspot region here across the uh, center disk. But we'll continue to watch that and see how that plays out. Um, but, uh, you know, it's... It's one of those things. We're looking at major active sunspot regions, but very minimal effect here on Earth. And uh, these things can change in the blink of an eye. I guess we'll, you know, it's we'll continue to watch this, right? That's all we can do right now. Uh, the weather forecast out here shows, uh, well, in the future, at least so to speak here, we do have some storminess coming into the West Coast, but uh, it's very limited. There's not, not a whole lot of uh, precipitation out there across the West Coast. For a severe weather outbreak, we'll get into that a little bit later uh, tomorrow, I think. We'll cover that a little bit later tomorrow. All right, a quick glance here at severe weather. The uh, seismograph stations here, well, they don't show a lot. So it's uh, 
It's pretty calm here across the seismograph stations. We'll continue to monitor the earthquake activity and lack thereof of earthquake activity throughout the evening. Sunday, right? It is Sunday night. Uh, it's one of my not so beneficial nights here because we got Monday coming around tomorrow. Um, I do want to wish everyone out there a uh, a good day, even though it is Monday coming up here tomorrow. Um, unfortunately, that's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> we'll catch you guys back out here for the next update. Have a good one, folks.